You're listening to Magrito Podcast Network, celebrating the culture of Chicanos and Latinos one story and voice at a time. Listen to more Magrito Podcast Network shows over at magrito.net. Connect on social, on Instagram and Facebook at Magrito. The Magrito Podcast Network. Three. Oh Whoa. my God, I jumped ahead of you. Huh? <laughs> That's fine. That's cool. I'm so excited to eat this. <laughs> I would be too, Amber. I, I would be too. Gregorio, thanks for being on the podcast, dude. I Thank appreciate it. Thank you so much, it. man. Thank you so much for having me here. Founder of the Knockout Bakery and 10th Planet Jiu-Jitsu Practitioner. That is so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> that is beautiful, man. Thank you. That's me. <laughs> thanks for coming out and of course doing the podcast. Thank you. I can't wait to get into all the exciting stuff that Knockout Bakery has to offer right. your audience, my audience, right. and then also get into your story right. about everything. But first, before we get into all that great stuff, we're going to munch on some knockout bakery items. Yes, you are. That yeah. you you're brought gonna, us. You're going to munch on the, uh, the oh-so-famous... So what do we got here? Knockout jar. Knockout jar. The knockout jar. Okay. And this is honestly, this is kind of what uh, just established uh the knockout bakery so what you're looking at there is a uh protein style no bake cheesecake Ooh. comes in a in a little four ounce jar just makes it very very personable um 13 grams of protein pound uh, found per cup which is fantastic it's a no bake cheesecake and i think one of the biggest things that a lot of people enjoy about the no bake thing is you don't have to freeze it there's no like process involved in it because if you with a normal cheesecake, you're going to have to put it in the freezer, take it out of the freezer, let it unthaw. There's just a process behind eating cheesecake in general. You know what I mean? That, pull it out of the fridge, start eating it, and just let your taste buds take <laughs> over, man, because it's, uh, it's pretty good stuff. All right, well, I'm gonna and I've got, I've got two different flavors for you. Amber over there oh, is eating what the she got? Fruit Loops. I'm and good. you, you can hear me. <laughs> I can't hear you. Are you <laughs> eating it already? She's, she's much. Oh my god! It's like halfway gone. <laughs> That's it's awesome. Good. It's fantastic. And then you, my friend, have the oh, Twinkie. And if you go all the way down, all that's way where down. you're going to get the crust. And uh, I like to let what everybody know that my crust, zero gram crackers, found in my crust. Um, hmm. I can't necessarily tell you what the recipe is it's the kernels it, it, yeah. <laughs> the, Oreo secret recipe. the secret recipe um but uh it's a fantastic blend whoa. goes perfect this thing is with, so good whoa yeah there we I go know. yeah um can and trade? yeah yeah so you guys trade. can just like try it off in the on both well, that's flavors. not fair i had one <laughs> scoop and you you're Hers like is gone you have you're, one bite left gone. on that one <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Oh my god, that's, that's delicious, dude. Yeah, dude. Yeah. And so not only is it super delicious, but it's fairly healthy for you. You got mm. 13 grams of protein, very low in fat. So the cool thing about my recipe too is because it's no bake, I don't have to use like all of the ingredients that usually go into like a normal cheesecake that are gonna add a bunch of calories and all that kind of stuff. And, and I'm telling you right now, the 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 moment I started introducing these to friends, friends were just like guy. You know what I mean? Like you, this you've got something here. You got to You got to keep on doing this. This crust is out of this it's world. So good. I thank you so much. <laughs> I I worked uh, at first when I first started doing this. I was using graham crackers, but mm -hmm. I was like, you know what? Like mm -hmm. everybody does graham crackers. You know what I mean? When it comes to a cheesecake, that's the first thing people think of is is graham crackers. Right. It's a graham cracker crust. I just want to do everything different. You know what I mean? I just want things of mine and the knockout bakery to be unique, you know, and, and, and different. And this recipe, there's, there's a lot of, of my dad in the crust. Uh, just my dad's kind of favorite things, I guess is what you could say. Um, but it comes out beautifully because you got the creaminess of, of the actual cheesecake itself. Yeah. And then you've got the, the, the crunchiness of the, of the bottom of the crust, you know what I mean? And when you just put both of them together, it's, uh, a match made in heaven, dude. It's the <laughs> best of both worlds. It because really is. It, you're, it, it's, it's healthy for you, right? I right. mean, all, all these, all yeah. these great uh, ingredients right. in there. But and then I, also, it's, it's 
it's kind of like a dessert. I mean, it's it's your dessert. It's your dessert. It's your protein dessert. It's, it's your protein dessert. And a lot of you can't you can't necessarily find too much of those nowadays. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And especially just stuff that just like just just really tastes good. Right. I mean, yeah. I'll, get, I'll, I'll, literally, I'll give these to people and they eat them. They're just like, I, I don't understand what this is. I'm like, what do, you, <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean? They're like, it's just, it's so good. Um, and I think the, the it's biggest breakfast. That's yeah, what it is. there you go. And you got like four more of them over there nice. too. There bro. Go. So you got breakfast, but, lunch, but and dinner coming up. But it's true because like, like for me, I'm, I'm the type that doesn't like, um, I don't like like diet anything. Right. Cause you can taste like that. Like, like some of like the fake sugar or right, like of course. sucrose or right. whatever, you know. So like a lot of that stuff I don't I don't necessarily care for because right. I don't like that aftertaste that you have when it comes to that. Or even I've had like protein cookies where I'm like, uh uh-uh. like I could uh, taste yeah. other stuff that I don't like. Right. And this one is like really good. Like I would if you wouldn't have told me there was protein in here, I would never know or you know, like it's delicious. It's really uh, good. Are you ready? Are you ready to trade now? Yeah, I've been <laughs> waiting. I, I have it and closed. And by the way, your everything. words mean the world to me, Amber. Thank you so much for yeah. saying that. But I mean I do find that a lot um in some of these these protein desserts that are kind of uh being put out nowadays, like the the protein cookies. Um I just like I said I just try to be super, super unique with what I'm doing. Um, and this is just, you know, one of the desserts I offer. Um, I've got protein balls, which everyone goes crazy for. Those are unbelievable. Um, next time I, I get a chance to be with you guys and see you guys, I'll definitely hook you up with some protein balls, too. Those are incredible. Um, but these these knockout jars are it's where it's at and everyone's pretty obsessed with them so it's pretty cool gregorio i need like a norchata one. Oh, you know what the funny thing is is actually one of my uh one of my uh training partners oh my at, god uh, yeah. dude <laughs> so one good. of my one of my training partners at 10th planet dude. um his his name's alfredo he uh he hit me up a couple weeks ago while we were on the mats and he goes bro i just had one of your cheesecakes you need to make an orchata one dude mm-hmm. like and I was like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna mess around with that. And we were just talking about maybe making a concha one. It's it's gonna happen. My flavors uh they go off the charts. So and sorry, I'm not showing. <laughs> you're good. <laughs> and like what you'll notice too is if you if you kind of like look at my page, I, I'm very very good with uh, presentation. You Let's know what I mean? Page, you have a free hand to put his page up, Amber. There we there go. go. Hey, there I it is. With my foot. <laughs> she's using both hands to eat right now she's way too busy so there it is um you know i take a, a lot of pride in 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 my page um you know there is um you know some of my athletes uh that that do interviews and just kind of talk about the knockout bakery and what it's done and just me as a person in general you know what i mean and i mean i just do a really really good job and it's honestly it's just kind of it, it, I don't want to say basic, but what I do is I take whatever it is that I'm putting in the jar. Let's say I'm going to do a Fruit Loops jar, right? The one that you're eating. Mm-hmm. I, I'll i take the Fruit Loops. I'll put them in a food processor, break them up so that the colors are just real nice and pretty, lay it on a cutting board, and they just kind of set up my product. You know, and then I'll put the Fruit Loops on the top. I think a big thing about the whole knockout jar is too is, is when you open up the knockout jar – it's you can look at what's on the top of it and you know exactly what you're going to be eating. It's yeah. a Fruit Loops jar. You know what I mean? Just based on the stuff that's on top. So there's no surprises. Mm-hmm. There's no surprises. And um, I, I, I like building uh, or setting up that type of journey for for individuals when they when they, you know, try my products, especially these knockout jars. But like that one right there was a uh, oh, that's my boy, Kenny Price. He's. <laughs> An amazing human being. He was actually texting me right before I came in here. He's like, "Bro, I need more knockout jars." Come <laughs> on, <laughs> <laughs> I got you, man. Uh, so that's a that's the Twinkie one, actually. That's the mm. oh no no that's not Twinkie. That's uh the cinnamon cinnamon streusel cake. Yeah, and that one is like it, you know. And I'm gonna let everyone know right now. I take these pictures on my iPhone. I'm nice. not you know I don't I don't use a professional camera. It's just a matter of of setting things up beautifully, putting yeah. things you know in the background that are nice. Um, I'm very descriptive, you know, in, 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 in what type of, of adventure you're going to be traveling into when it comes to the knockout jars. Um, and, uh, yeah, I oh, man, I, I, <laughs> I love that you guys are doing this right now. It's been <laughs> so cool. Just even going through my page. So I do, as you can see, just like right there as well. Um, I do merchandise, um, 
the one thing that you'll know about jujitsu athletes, especially. <laughs> That's in... cool. I go back to that. That's funny, dude. Chokes and cheesecakes. Chokes, cakes and cheesecakes. Oh, right? That's oh, one of the, cho- yeah. yeah, it's one of the rash guards that I released, and nice. uh, it was a. It, it did super well. I did it in a high letter pink uh, for my daughter. She asked me, "Hey, Dad, can you can you make me a a t shirt?" And I said, "Okay, baby, what's your favorite color?" She said, "Pink." So I made her that rash guard. Um, but the chokes and cheesecakes, um, <laughs> it just goes perfectly with what I'm doing, um, both jujitsu and with cheesecakes, obviously. And um, I'm just I'm 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 loving this adventure that I'm on, you know what I mean? With the knockout bakery, I'm, I'm having a lot of fun. It's, it's a, uh... so what, what like stemmed that? Like what, what did you feel like there was a need for more products with, um, you know, like, like with what you're doing, like protein, like what, why, why did you start it? The mind buzz is powered by mind buzz media. MindBuzz Media is an on-site video and audio podcast production company. Have you ever thought about starting your own video and audio podcast? Or do you have an existing podcast that you want to take to the next level? MindBuzz Media brings a professional podcast studio to you. Visit mindbuzz.org for more. I mean, so the Knockout Bakery was just kind of a, it's, it's, it was a project that I, I wanted to – at first, it was just – I just love being in a kitchen. I've been in a, a kitchen my whole life. My my father um, has been a, a chef, still is a chef. He doesn't do it for profession anymore, but you know he's been a, a cook and, and a chef for my whole life. I've just always seen – him being in the kitchen and it just it inspired me to to try and and do something likewise you know what i mean and um i just there's a lot of companies out there and i i I don't ever try and disrespect any company because i think that we all have our own you know niche and, and way we go about things but i just wanted to provide products that had and displayed passion you know what i mean and I, I feel like there's just not enough of that out there. And whenever you have my products, whether it's a knockout jar, um, smoothies, meals, which is another thing I just started implementing too, you can just tell that when you eat it, it was done with someone who cares for what they're doing. You know what I mean? And it wasn't done in this big manufacturing company where they've got a bunch of machines kind of you know making these products for you. It was done with my hands and my hands only. And I think that um, that was one of the reasons why I wanted to kind of start this project was to show people what passion and a good heart can do to food. You know what I mean? And um, I I think that just based off of me being a jujitsu athlete myself and me being surrounded by jujitsu athletes, I was like, I just, they, they need... They need stuff. People need stuff, not just jujitsu athletes, athletes in general, you and everybody. We need good food. You know what I mean? We all consume food on a daily basis. You know, we need food to survive. So I think that that was something that I took into consideration as well. And I I just moved forward with trying to provide as as much protein and nutrition that was needed for these athletes. You know what I mean? And because I am an athlete myself or I treat myself as an athlete, I, I, I take that into consideration. I would never give something to an athlete that I wouldn't eat myself. You know what I mean? And, um, I think that's kind of where the knockout bakery just kind of like was, was started and inspired. Um, you know, I, I, I went through, a lot trying to develop this whole thing. Um, you know, 10th planet orange, which is, um, my jujitsu Academy. Um, they helped me build the knockout bakery. My coach helped me build the knockout bakery. Um, cause at first it was, like I said, I was just kind of like kind of doing it for fun. You know what I mean? And kind of getting it to the homies. Like, Hey, try this. Tell me what you think, you know? And, and then everyone was like, yo, dude, this shit is good, dude. Like you, you, you got to, keep going with this. You get to do something with this, you know? And back then I was working jobs as well. You know what I mean? So this was kind of just a fun little project I was doing just to kind of stay in the kitchen. And, and then I just, I just stopped, I stopped doing everything else. And I just focused on the knockout bakery and 
this is what I've got. Do you remember that aha moment? Like when, when you started making these products, right? And then you started getting all these feet, all this great feedback from right. your friends and family. Like, right. Do you remember the aha moment? Or like, was it something like, I need to do this or I should build this type of brand? Like, do you remember that? I, I do, do. There was a, so when I, when I first implemented like my, my meal plans, right. My, my actual food that I cook, um, at that time I was, I was struggling for cash, you know, knockout bakery was doing well, but it just, it wasn't paying the bills. You know what I mean? So I remember going to a meal prep company, working for a meal prep company. And, uh, and I got to keep that meal prep company on the low, <laughs> but, <laughs> um, but I remember going to that meal prep company and working for them for a little bit. Right. And I would remember like looking at all their food, um, and, and, and how much, you know, uh, how many people they were helping, you know what I mean? And, and how many meals they were sending out and stuff like that. And I remember asking the owners, you know, cause I mean, I, I, w- I was in there and I, I wanted to know, you know, I was just like, Hey, so like, I'm just curious, dude, like how much, how much money are you guys like pulling in? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> like a little raton, dude. <laughs> and I was just like, so like, what, you know, like, what do you, how, how does this work? And so I kind of yeah. watched the process and he told me, you know, what he was doing and how much money he was making, which probably wasn't very intelligent. But I remember taking that information and I remember going to my dad and I guess this is going to be my, my aha moment. You know what I mean? And, and, uh, I remember going to my dad and I was like, dad, I, I think that like, I officially want to take like the knockout bakery from being just like this where I was just kind of doing it for friends and, mm-hmm. and family and stuff to like getting it out to like the general public. I think I want to not only do my bakery stuff, but I want to do some, I want to do meals. I want to do meal prepping. And my dad dude shot me down quick. My dad was like, <laughs> nah, that's not going to work. And I was like, what the fuck you mean? It's not going to work. And he was just like, look, there's so many meal prep companies out there. Gonna go to you. You're just, it doesn't like, why? You know what I mean? Just stick to your job. Don't, you know? And I was like, nah, you know what? I'm not F you, dad, but like, I, nah, dude, mm-hmm. I wanna try this. You know what I mean? And I remember trying it. I remember uh, doing it for the first like couple of weeks, maybe even a month. I was just kind of doing it to the jujitsu homies again, right? And I really wasn't getting too much feedback. And I'll never forget this moment. This was kind of like an aha moment for me. I remember going to my dad and taking him uh, a, a plate of food that I had made. And my dad looked at me straight in the eyes. <laughs> and uh, he goes, I'm going to tell you two things right now, Gregorio. Go One, I would never eat that food myself. <laughs> and he goes, oh two, I would never serve that food to the general public. And I was like, what? yeah, so this is my aha moment. I'm telling you right now, it's crazy. And I was I just like, I thought you were no, like, this is the best thing I've ever eaten. It was crazy because like, that's what I was expecting from my pops. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like, it just, it just didn't happen that way. And my dad said, look, if you're going to do this, you're going to do it the right way. I want you to watch me cook for like a couple months, I want you to shadow me. I want you to see everything that I do. I want you to see how food needs to be presented to people. And I was like, okay, I'm in, show me. I went through like a two month training course with my pops who in, in, and I could just be very, very biased because he's my dad and I love my dad with all my heart and all my soul. Um, I don't think there's anyone out there better with food than my dad. Um, he's just incredible at what he does. Um, so I, I went through that two month training course with him and I remember after that two months, things started to kind of pick up as far as the meals go, you know what I mean? And then I remember taking a dish to my dad and having him try it and he goes, this is the way food's supposed to be. And I was like, that, that's the one right there. If I can have Javier Calvillo tell me that that's the way food is supposed to be off of food that I made, I know I'm doing okay. I don't, I really don't need any other anything from any no reviews from anybody else on planet earth if i have that man tell me that my food is good i'm good to go and that was that was my moment that was when i knew like okay look i've i've got something here now you know and and he was always he's always a fan of my desserts and stuff like that but like i said it was just it wasn't paying the bills 
you know what I mean? I still kind of had to work on the side to kind of, you know, provide for everything else. And I've got two baby girls, so I, you know, I need to provide for them. And, um, but it was, it was at that moment that I was like, okay, look, I, 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 I think I, I don't want to say like I did it cause I, I still haven't done it yet. You know what I mean? I'm still, this is a work in progress, but I did it. You know what I mean? I impressed the man, the chef, Javier Calvillo. And then I was like, okay, I, I, I think that at this point, um, I'm going to run with this and I'm going to give it my all. I'm going to give it, um, everything that I have. And, and it's been that way ever since. And it's not like it hasn't been that way from the beginning because I still put a lot of love into everything that I did. But you know, when you're, when you're doing meal prepping for people, it's just different, you know, and, and, um, I'll have people eat my food, you know, and these people have been alive for 25 plus years and they'll go, this is literally the best food I've ever had. And I was like, wow, really? Like you've got just Amber, Gil, you have no idea what that means to me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it, it, what those words mean to me. Um, it, it's, it's incredible. And again, I don't know if some of these people are being biased because I'm a good dude and, and, and they enjoy me as a person, but you know, I want to take, uh, the benefit of the doubt and say that I think that they, they truly enjoy the food because they've been continuously getting these meal preps off me. And, um, it just, it just means the world to me tremendously. That or they seen you on the mat and they're the one. Yeah. That- <laughs> they're like, yo, just don't kick my ass. Kick my ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, no, but could it, be a little bit of both, but, dude, but it, it feels great, right? It it's feels amazing. amazing. At whatever you're doing, you're you're painting, you're you're a musician, right. you you're a podcaster. To hear somebody say that your passion is is mildly changing the way that they view that type of product, right? It feels awesome. It's unreal, and um, I have a lot of respect. Like you, I mean, you have, you have a lot of passion for what you're doing. You know what I mean, and. Um, Chris from This Madre Medio, right? Mm-hmm. Got a lot of passion for what he's doing, which is why I I started, you know, just really like following him and like and what he's got going on because any any video he posts or anything like that, you can just just by his mannerisms and and his smile and all that kind of stuff, you can just tell that he loves what he does, you know, and it don't need to be cooking, you know? It, you, you podcasting. Um uh like you said a painter, um a car detailer. Uh, a musician, a, a photographer, anything. yeah, you know, just passion. You know exactly. I mean? So, and um, I think that people recognize passion, and when they do, that's what makes them want to continue to keep following. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, absolutely, yeah, yeah. And when you're getting this positive feedback about what you're doing, like right. it, it only fuels that. It's nuts. It's like yeah. <laughs> it's throwing gasoline on a flame, dude. Exactly. It's it's, it's amazing. Um, I I stay very, very humble with what I'm doing. You know, I'm, I'm, um, very generous too. Um, there'll be times where I, it's happened on multiple occasions where I will literally just like Santa Claus, dude, grab a bag of goodies, walk into a random grocery store and just part, start passing out goods. You know what I mean? And it's not necessarily for me to build, um, customers or anything of that nature. I just, I love what I do. You know what I mean? And I, 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 I love providing people with food. I mean, it's just, dude, there was, <laughs> we're talking about my dad. There was times, dude, um, and I guess this is kind of where I mirror that, um, you know, just walking around and handing food. There'd be times where my pops, dude, would literally just wake up in the morning, like five in the morning, and he would cook food for the entire neighborhood. And he would go outside. Wow. He would set up tables. He would <laughs> set up chairs. And he would go door to door. He would literally go door to door in our neighborhood, knock on the door and say, I made breakfast for you. Just, I mean, yeah, they were neighbors, but these were random people. You know what I mean? (laughs) So it's just, I, 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 I saw that and I, I took all of that in and that's something I'm never going to forget, you know, which is why I'm so generous with what I do. You know what I mean? And, um, I think that goes a long way too. Yeah. And I think when you find something that, you absolutely love and you're passionate about, you want to share it with other people. Of course. Yeah. 
Right? Of course. Oh, yeah. I agree. Look at I mean, I brought you guys a bag of goodies. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm excited, <laughs> dude. That's awesome. But I, I even think, too, like, I, I think back to some of, like, our ventures, right? Like, I, I was telling you earlier. Um, I think, like, above like like I, i'm gonna speak in 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 the sense of of me right like of course the the business has been open for seven years now we've you know done multiple media outlets and we've been you know articles written on us and everything people come from everywhere and oh my god thank you you know there's stories of people that had their babies and were going through tough times when their babies were in the NICU and the coffee shop was a place where they would go and cry and talk and everything. And and you hear all these stories, right? Yeah. And I think like to me it's like like you said, it's so humbling and it's like, geez, like I'm just I'm walking just, in and, <laughs> and doing what I love, right? I'm just doing what I love. But mm-hmm. but where where I'm getting at is like I think that when your parent, especially I feel like a dad, because I feel like a mom or at least in my sense like my mom is always it doesn't matter what i do right and my mom's always like i'm so proud of you right but i feel like for my dad or at least for like for me like mexican culture like my dad is just so much harder right right kind of like get through right but hearing your dad tell you how proud he is it's like if a million people told you how amazing your thing is like like it, it doesn't it doesn't equate to to other people telling you it's like all you needed to hear, or at least for myself, all I needed to hear was like that, right? That validation yeah. of your dad being like, absolutely, um, I'm proud of you. Yeah, like you did it. You yeah. know, because the same thing happened with us where my dad was so mad. He was mad that you know my sister, my brother in law, and myself were opening this business. He was mad. He was like, what do you guys know? What do you guys know about business? What you don't like, you guys are going to leave your job. I was going to school, you know, right. you're going to leave all of that for what? Like, just keep your head down. Just keep working. Get right. a good job. And that's it. Right. And we were like, mm, no, nah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. You know? and, yeah, I don't and, think so. <laughs> and a couple years later, he did an interview where they did like a video on us, um, right. my sister and I. Right. And they interviewed him. And one of the things I've said it on here before, I think mm, one of the things he says is like they asked him, like, what's your biggest regret? from all of this right right and he's like my biggest regret was not partnering up with them <laughs> you know? like, I, fucked up. Yeah, like, I fucked up but he says he's like it wasn't that i didn't think that they can do it and i don't think that your dad didn't think that you could do it from the beginning right i think it's just this fear of a parent of of course you know the unknown and i feel like a lot of the generation or at least like like the generation before us or like before me like it wasn't about taking risks. It was about doing your job. And if you were good at your job, then you did your job and you stayed there. Right. You, you, it was stability. Right. You know, and now it's like us, it's like, all right, we, we know what stability looks like or may look like, right. In some right. senses, but no, we're, we're out for more. We're out for adventure and putting our creativity out there. So. Yeah, and I mean, big cheers to you guys too. Thanks. You know what I mean? For, for continuing that and, uh, your words were beautiful. Um, Thanks. and you're, you're very, very right. Um, you know, and I think that there was a, a certain amount of, of instability that my dad was seeing at first, which is kind of what, you know, caused him to be like, yeah. and especially he's a chef. Yeah, I know, dude. <laughs> I know. He, he, he's the, he's the top notch guy. He's the top notch guy when yeah. it comes to food. So yeah. I can only imagine. Yeah. I mean, and, and he, he's done, he's opened restaurants. Um, nice. he's helped open restaurants. He's helped, uh, written recipes for, for different companies. Um, so, you know, he's, he's, he's up there, right. you know what I mean? So he definitely, you know, there was uh, probably a little bit of concern out there. Um, but, I'm just glad I was able to believe in myself, right? As a as a man and as a father and uh, as a son, and and just say like I'm 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 willing to to try. I'm willing to jump. You know what I mean? And right. I, I don't necessarily know what's at the bottom, but I'm willing to jump. And and I'm hoping that everything comes out okay and turns out okay. And um. Right now, man, I, I, I everything is is okay. You know Gregorio, I, mean? I was thinking about that. I have been thinking that about that for the past, I want to say a few days now about how I don't want to say insane an entrepreneur might seem. Right, but we we seem kind of crazy, of course, because we have to 
put in all this work and, and imagination and looking at the goal without necessarily getting anything and in return short term. Right. Everything is long term. Of course. And we have to we have to be crazy enough to believe in ourselves to know that what we're working for is gonna work. And right. if it doesn't, we're gonna find out. Right. We're gonna find You're out. We're gonna find out and you could find out quickly. You could find out a couple years down the road. You know what right. I mean? It's just it's just just and I think entrepreneurship is just this like it's this never ending um, you're just, you're constantly evolving, right? right? And it's just, it's something that you, you just, every single day you wake up and you're going to try something new. You know what I mean? And if it doesn't work, okay, cool. Well, let's, let's try something else. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, big cheers to you guys. Um, you know, with, with everything that you're doing, not only, you know, with the coffee shop, but you know, with the podcasting, um, it, it, it takes a lot of will and a lot of drive to... I feel crazy sometimes. I do too, bro. I, I really do. You have <laughs> no I'm idea. Glad you, I'm glad you said it Dude, first, bro. <laughs> I, I, you have no idea because there's days where I'm just hours on my computer working it's, on yeah. on on pitch decks and, right. and working on on numbers and trying to project on something that's not even there yet. Right. But I mean, few. It, it it's it's there. Right. It, it's there. Right. But you're working towards it, and you just have to think about any everything that could go wrong. But you're also thinking about things that could go right, of course. And that's what you're banking on. You're banking on the you're, you're banking on the rights. You're banking on the right, <laughs> right? But that's fine because if if you do find something that may be wrong, okay, that's fine. Let's scratch it. Right. Exactly. I found out. Uh, I found it a way on how not to do that. Right. Right. And it's just it's it's all they're all lessons. They're all learning curves. Right. Right. And. Like going going back to you saying that sometimes this shit'll make you crazy. Yeah. Um, dude, I mean, I I'll, I'll be, you know, busting out three hundred and fifty meals for people on a weekly basis. And I'm just oh. like dude. Whoa. Yeah. That's I'm a like, lot. like, whoa. You know, this is this is a lot of food at times, you know what I mean? And and you know, sometimes the process will get repetitive, but then I'm just like, man, you know, like I used to work nine to fives. I used to like have to wake up at a certain time and then and get to work. And a boss would tell me, "You go do this, you go do that." And I'm yeah. just like, every time I I kind of get in that mindset where it's just like oh, this is like a lot. I'm just like, but like, remember where you used to be. You know what I mean? And remember that you have so much passion for what you're doing, and that this is this is exactly what you want to do, and and you know exactly where you want to go. Right. And at this point, you know, I was just talking to my dad a couple of days ago. We want to. I want to open up a spot. I want to get myself like a like a, a a place where I can you know maybe turn it into like a cafe slash bakery where I can you know that's serve cool. yeah where yeah I can like dude serve food to like the general public you know what I mean and that's that's the next step um you know there's a lot to go into it which is totally fine I'm here for the process um but that's where I want to go you know what I mean and and like like you had said before there's there's a lot of of unknown with this this whole entrepreneurship thing but um. You know, badass people like you, me, and Amber over here, we can just keep fucking going and keep pushing. You know yeah. what I mean? We got to like the madness. You got to like it you just got, a little bit. You have you to. Get, you have to be a little crazy, bro. <laughs> exactly. In this whole entrepreneurship I think so. thing, right, Amber? You have to be a little bit crazy to do something you like this. You have to be like um, delusional. I yeah. think is a word. That's a great. That's word. it. Yeah, that's it's not crazy. Word. It's delusional. What, yeah. what am I yeah. talking about? Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a good word, actually. <laughs> yeah. Very good. There's there's a girl that I follow and she she owns a business. She's a coach. She has like two master's degrees or something. And she says she's like I'm in my delusional era. She's mm. like I'm in the era I like of like, I like delusion. that actually yeah. the delusional era. Yeah, mm. because That's she says she's like cool. she's like a mom and then she still has her career. Right. Like she's she I I can't remember what she does. Um, social work. She does social work. Okay. She owns a business. Right. She does coaching. She puts events oh, together. So she's got, she's she got has like going on, so dude. many things lot. going on, and then yeah. she has like two kids. So she's like, I'm in my delusional era. Like she's right. like, it's a delusion for me to think like, like it's so delusional of her to think that she can do everything right, but right. she believes it and she does it right. And it's like, it's it's yeah, it, I, I like that the delusional area. I mean, because obviously, 
knockout bakery is is me it's what i do um funny thing is is i actually have a really really big passion for for auto detailing car detailing as well so on tuesdays and wednesdays i drive out to huntington beach i've got a buddy of mine shout out to exclusive auto detail um i've got a buddy of mine who owns a company out there so i just i just help him do that because it's another passion of mine um but on top of that i've got two baby girls that i'm raising to be beautiful women in this world um, I, I'm a jujitsu practitioner as well. Um, I'm a son, I'm a brother, I'm a friend. Um, so yeah, it's, it, it's, it's a lot, <laughs> it's a lot. I'm in that delusional stage too, you know what I mean? But <laughs> I love, uh, I love what I'm doing. Um, I love being alive and present. You know what I mean? I, I think that just it, being alive and being here is a blessing in itself, man. We don't know when it is that we're right. not here no more. You know what I mean? So yeah. I just try and live it up as, as much as I possibly can try and help as many people as I can, um, be a beautiful father to those two beautiful baby girls of mine. Um, be a good man, be a good son, um, be a good friend and be fucking super, super good at cooking food. <laughs> you, you brought up a good point because in the midst of our de- delusional states, right. It's hard to keep yourself grounded and in the moment because right. you're so used to thinking in the future, I got to do this, I got to do that. Right. Uh, this needs to be done. Right. But, you know, sometimes we we miss the point in the journey to the goal. Right. Right. I mean, at least from personal experience, at least from today. Right. Right, Amber, what, what we were talking about earlier about... Uh, She's, <laughs> she, I'm like, she's, she's still over there munching. She's munching, bro. <laughs> it's my dessert. Hey, there that's okay. Go. I love it. No, oh, yeah. Okay. On a scale right. of one to ten, Amber, how good is that? Oh, it was a fifteen. Uh, it was really good. Dude, oh we God. and we were like, ah, oh, like we, we just had dinner at her uh, oh, at her parents' perfect house. Perfect timing, man. And, and and it's perfect timing. Yeah, perfect timing. The the carne asada just went down. Oh, so. Carne asada. <laughs> that's my weakness. Uh, this is perfect, dude. It's really good. Yeah, that's but, awesome. But where I was getting to was like sometimes we we're so far into thinking about the future that we sometimes we need to step back and thinking about of course think about mm-hmm. like what's going on now right to, now right and how you like what are you feeling in the moment right type of thing right I agree so, I agree it's uh it's a balance that we have to consider right and I think that like when you can find that balance though um. It just it just helps you continue to keep moving yes. on every single day. You know what right. I mean? When you can find that balance, because otherwise, I mean, I think we'd all be going pretty batshit crazy with yeah. everything we got going on in life. You know what I mean? But there's obviously that, like a you had said, there's a balance. How do you find balance? Um, I mean, ju- jujitsu helps that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, physical exercise helps. Um, my kids, my my two daughters, Siren Ray, Rowan Rose, uh, Daddy loves you, by the way. Um. They keep me very balanced, um, you know, in, in, in the, in the mix of, of being uh, a chef, a jujitsu practitioner, doing car detailing, all that kind of stuff. Those, those, those baby girls keep me pretty balanced. You know what I mean? And, um, sometimes I just need to honestly just take a step back, maybe go on a walk at a park, listen to, you know, the trees blow and, and, and just hear nature and, and just like really ground myself and just know that I'm, I'm here and I'm, I'm alive and, and, you know, I'm, I'm headed towards where I want to head towards. But I would say that, that being a father is truly amazing and, and very, very balancing. You know, it, 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 they're two baby girls. I grew up with two brothers and we used to beat the fucking living (laughs) shit out of each other, dude. Um, so having two baby girls it just like i don't know just opens up this this spot in your heart and it just it's so different right it's an it's, an, it's we it's, we still it's, beat the shit out of each other no, I, mean, I have a sister my, but i know it's not the same <laughs> my kids beat the shit out of each other so it's 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 there it's just this it's it opens up this spot from a dad's perspective yeah. where you're just you're you're a lot softer you know what i mean you're just a lot more in tune with emotion um and I, I'm gonna have to say that that's that's kind of where where most of my balance comes from. Now, um, jujitsu saved my life, so I I'm gonna have to say that uh, you know jujitsu keeps me super grounded, super balanced. 
just my my outlet to go to. You know, I, I mean? hear that a lot. That jujitsu, you know, uh, maybe changes somebody, but it saves somebody. It'll, it'll, it'll it, save it, my life. Really, it saved my life without any question. I know that's like super cliche because I know that you've probably heard that before on probably numerous of occasions, but uh, jujitsu saved my life. Um, I mean, when does it start to become a cliche to being like a fact? You know, it's it's a that's a great question. Um, it just it it'll keep it'll keep you out of trouble. I'll tell you that. You know, um, it'll keep your anger just out of the just it just goes away. Like a- any anger that you've ever had in life, if you go to Whoa. jujitsu and you roll on a mat, I promise you that anger will disappear hmm. and it's Maybe just need to sign up <laughs> we both need to sign up <laughs> can we I, spar I, against each other though you, you can yeah you guys can roll against each other where yeah. it's not domestic violence <laughs> yeah, see that's amazing yeah you guys could totally get away with that beat the shit out of each other on a mat and then you know it's all good and then afterwards you can hug each other yeah. kiss each other and just be like all right cool babe that was good um yeah i, I you know i i had a hot head you know, growing up as a kid, I was just, I, it was very destructive, I guess is what you could say. You know what I mean? Not just to myself, but to anything and anyone around me. Um, and it was still kind of that way up until I found jujitsu. And, you know, I'll never forget, I was going through just a super rough time. And I was wearing, I've always kind of been in the combat jujitsu world. I was wearing uh, one of my uh, homies t-shirts and I was at the gym and I had a, a you know, a, a friend, a companion of mine uh, walk up and he was like, Hey dude, like, do you do jujitsu? I was like, nah, dude, I'm just wearing a t-shirt that says I do jujitsu. <laughs> uh, he was like, well, do you want to try it? And I was like, um, yeah, let's do it. Tell me when and tell me where. So he set it up for us to go and 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 get some rolls in. There it is, Tenth Planet Orange. That is my home. And if you can actually that first picture right there, this one, yeah, that one right there. That it, if you notice, it's kind of hard to tell, but that is a rash guard that I made. It oh, says yeah. Knockout Bakery on the top. That's one I of the seen, designs I, seen I did. This design in, in your right, yeah. Page. So that's one of the uh, that's one of the designs I did. My most recent one. That's actually the one that I did for my coach. Um, shout out to Mike John. I love you with my whole heart, Coach. Um, and uh, that's the guillotine gangster rash guard, and this dude's guillotine, dude. I'm uh, guy just rips people's heads <laughs> off, and he does it on like the highest level, which is really really cool. Um, so um, yeah, going back to it, um, he had me meet with him on a mat. We rolled. I had no idea what I was doing, and I fell in love, and I just never stopped going. And uh, my story with my coach. There you go. That's my coach right there with the white rash guard on. Uh, right there. Yeah. That's the man, the myth, the legend, Mike John. Um, that dude is an assassin. (laughs) So good at what he does. Um, and just an incredible human being. Um, my story with him is, um, he had known of me because I was always constantly posting like me doing jujitsu stuff, um, like on my Instagram stories. And I remember he reached out to me and he was like, Hey, um, I think that you, have some potential. I think you look good doing what you're doing. Do you want to come and actually give this like a shot, like a real shot and be at a jujitsu gym? And at the time I was struggling with money and I was like, look, coach, um, I am one unbelievably humbled that you're even talking to me right now. Um, and saying that I have potential in this, but I just don't have the money. You know what I mean? Plain and simple. I just don't have the money to, to be able to be at a jujitsu gym. And my coach told me, I don't need money from you. Wow. You come here, show up, and you roll, and I know that you'll pay me back. Wow. And I mean, I was I was blown away, blown away. It just by that one message I received from that man, I just kind of knew what the jujitsu community community was about. Um, I showed up the next day. I've never left since. Never. And I, that's why I'm so when it comes to my coach Mike John, I. Like my relationship with him is just like that. I mean, that dude's like my my brother. That dude's like my, I love that dude. You know what I mean? And I will go above and beyond to do whatever I can, which is why I made him his own custom rash guard. <laughs> and that rash guard did so well. Um, everyone, it was it was really cool. We, I did a media day for Knockout Bakery and I had maybe 
30 of the students show up with that rash guard on. So we were all just like in unison rolling, killing each other with that rash guard on just for <laughs> my coach. It was really, really cool. But, um, that dude, um, saved my life and he continues to keep saving my life every day. You know what I mean? He's a, a good man. He's a great coach. Um, an even better competitor. And when you see that type of, of passion, right? We're going to talk about passion again. That dude has such a passion for jujitsu and just helping people and teaching people that you see it and you can't help, but like gravitate towards it. You know what I mean? You can't help, but like want to be around it all the time. And that's why I, I, I just love jujitsu. You know what I mean? And, and he has taken me from a white belt to a blue belt in less than two years. Um, just based off of him coaching me. Um, I'm pretty coachable for the most part. You know what I mean? Even, I mean, not just in jujitsu, but just in life in general, you know, going back to the conversation with my dad, Hey dude, I need to, I need to coach you on what to do with this food. Right. I'm very coachable. I just love learning. And this gives me the ability to do so. You know what I mean? This is just a constant, uh, a constant practice that I'm learning. And, um, there's just so much benefit from it. You know what I mean? I'm going to have to get you two on the mats. (laughs) dude well there's benefit to learning like you're open to you have to be vulnerable for one you have to be vulnerable to information very for one and not not many people are able to do that because they they don't they can't see themselves or they they don't want to open themselves up to right to something like that right it's hard i think i think the thing with that because I'm like, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put myself out on the limb. Be for vulnerable, else. please but, be vulnerable. We're here but for I, it. This I is the podcast. For I think it. my my toxic trait. <laughs> I'm like my toxic trait is that I feel and I see everything and I think it's easy. Right. 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 So I'm like, oh, that's easy. Like right. I can do that. Right. Right. And then I, again, my toxic trait is like me believing that. I can learn it on my own or I can do it on my own. Right. right? And then sometimes when there's opportunities for being coached, I'm like, Oh no, 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 no. Right. Like I know what I'm doing. Right. Like, let me do it on my own, you know? Right. And, and it, it doesn't get you very far. Yes. That delusion gets you far (laughs) of of (laughs) just kind of diving into things. Cause you think that everything is accessible and easy. Right. And I like that about myself. I do. But I do, I feel like I need to work on being coachable. Right. You know, yeah, taking I mean, feedback and because I'm, I'm all about giving people feedback. But then, you know, what I'm learning now is like, okay, it's okay. Like, right. there's room to improve. And I know of that course. there's always room to improve. Right. But I think it's hard when you feel like someone's jabbing at you. Right. You know what I mean? Of at course. you as a person or you as your idea. And that's where we fail. But like you that you're saying, like you're easily coachable. Like right. that's why you find success too, is because you're willing to adapt and willing to um, you know, hear these things from people and right. learn. Right. And, and I think that's amazing. Uh, your words, Amber, you're awesome. <laughs> um yeah, it, it uh I am actually, to be honest with you, even like, like I said, like growing up, like I don't like people telling me what to do. Yes. You know what I mean? <laughs> Just plain and simple. Even mom, even dad, like don't do this. Don't do that. Like what the fuck? Like, what do you mean? You know what I mean? I want to go and do it now that you tell me not to go do it. Yeah. So when I found jujitsu and, and like I, I found my coach, he, his ability to teach and like break things down and slow things down and then you know, he'll break you off into, to, to, you know, partners and, and work on the drills and he'll come up to you and he'll talk to you and he'll be like, Oh, this is where this should be. This is this and that. And there's just something behind that, that like, I, I love, you know what I mean? And it hasn't always been that way, but for some reason, jujitsu has given me the ability to be able to take information in information that I don't know. And that doesn't just mean jujitsu. I mean, just general information in life, right. And process it and just be like, okay, well, what can I do? You know what I mean? And not just have it just be so overbearing and, and, and thinking, oh man, this is, this is it. This is going to shut me down or I don't want to do this. And I don't want to do that. Just, it just allows you it. Jujitsu is a thinking game. There's a lot of like thought process in the whole entire thing. Right. So when you go and you translate that like into life, you just, you, you take everything in and you start to process it. 
And I just, that's why I'm so keen on any, 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 I think that anybody, like whether you have like a, a, a disability, anything, like literally jujitsu will, will help you in some way, shape or form. And you may not see it like the first couple sessions, you know what I mean? The first couple classes, you're probably like, this fucking is really hard. You know what I mean? And it's not to say that it's not hard, but once you start to break down and see the benefits involved, not only physically, but just mentally as well, you're just like, this is, this is where I need to be, you know? And that's why you'll hear it so often. And I've seen so many different videos just amongst the jujitsu community where, where people will be like, this, this sport saved my life. I was dealing with depression. I was dealing with anxiety. You know, I lost a family member and I needed somewhere to go. And it, when I go to 10th planet orange Monday through Thursday, I I'm like amongst my family. I'm amongst my brothers. I'm amongst my sisters. I'm amongst my coach. You know what I mean? And, and it's just this, this community that you don't want to ever let go of, you know? And, and that's why I say that like, there's just so much beauty found and it, I, you know, not just jujitsu, you know what I mean? There's uh, any martial art out there I think is, is incredible for people, but there's just something about the jujitsu community that is just very, very addicting, you know? And, and, uh, I, I found it, I fell in love and I am never turning back. I, I would like to get my kids involved in it at one point in time, but I'm going to let them, you know, make that decision. Um, they've been, uh, to jujitsu with me and seen daddy do his thing. And the other day, my daughter was watching, <laughs> my daughter was watching one of my jujitsu videos and I made a post about it. Actually. She was like, daddy, why do you like doing jujitsu? It looks like it hurts. <laughs> I was like, it, I mean, it does, you know what I mean? It does hurt. But I think that the things that hurt, you know, in life, um, help us grow as individuals, you know what I mean? And there's just a lot of, of learning to, to be sought in, in jujitsu. So how long have you been doing that for? It's been about two years now. Yeah. About two years. I'm going on like a two years in like a couple months. Um, but I, I started off not knowing shit, dude. Like yeah. anything. I mean, I've, I've always watched like, and you know, when I went into your bathroom, I saw the UFC thing. I, I've always been into fighting. I've always watched fighting and obviously they're doing jujitsu while punching each other in the face and stuff like that. But doing straight jujitsu, when I got on that mat for the first time, I was lost. I'm, I'm athletic, you know what I mean? So like, I kind of had like basic movements down and I guess power and stuff like that, but I just didn't know anything. Yeah. But, I, and I think that's the, that's the key right there too, is going into doing something that you've never done before right. and, and be vulnerable to say, I don't know shit about this, right. but I'm going to give it a try. Right. And I'm going to keep doing it until maybe I'll learn something about right. this. Right. Yeah. Right? I mean, still to this day, dude, I get my ass handed to me. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, every single day I go there, I'm, I'm always getting submitted. I'm always, there's, there's always something happening, but you learn. Yeah. You know what I mean? You learn in, in all that. And I, I think that you learn more from getting your ass handed to you than you do handing someone else their ass. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. You learn from the, the bad experiences right. more than you do from the good. Like I get it. Like it, it's, it's great. Like winning in, in anything. Right. Right. But most of what you learn from bad experiences, you take to make yourself better and whatever you do. I agree. Like a lot of things that have happened like throughout this podcast, like back in stuff, like memory cards, not being in and right. losing a whole two hour episode oh, or, dude. Uh, memory cards not even being big enough to to keep it or right. lights uh, going out, lights going out, uh, just all those different uh, nuances that you don't, right. you would never know about. But right. you, after that, you you look at your operation and say, okay, I got to rethink this. I got to rewire, and right. I got to try to implement something that will fix itself for the next right. time around. Right. Just you got to make yourself better and better each and every time. And right. that comes with experience. Right. And whatever you do. Whatever you do, man. It doesn't need to be jujitsu. It doesn't need to be podcasting. It doesn't need to be cooking. You right. Know what I mean, this you can apply these things to anything you're doing. Driving a car. Driving I remember the car. first time I drove a uh, manual. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> <laughs> Funny thing about that. That's actually how I learned to drive was driving a manual right. car. That was 
the craziest experience. You'll learn, you learn real quick. Qu- you'll learn quick, quick if you're on an incline. Absolutely. or an, You're just like, what yeah. the fuck is happening right yeah. now? I remember my dad. I was 15 years. I probably shouldn't say this. I was 15 <laughs> years old. My dad shows up with uh, it was a, a white Ford um, Ranger manual. And he shows up with it. And he was like, you're going to learn how to drive today. Yeah. And I was like, what do you mean? He was like, you're going to learn how to drive today. And I was like, okay. So I get in the car and there's this like stick thing, yeah. right? And I'm just like, what the fuck is this? Is there's what three is the, pedals? What, what are you what talking are you ta- about? Yeah. And he was like, okay, we're going to go to a, like an open street and I'm going to teach you how to drive. And um, dude, I, and I'll never forget being on a, on a hill the first time around too. And I was just like, dad, we're like falling backwards. He was like, okay, just, just, just kind of like find this balance between yeah. the, the, the shifting and, and the, uh, um, the pedal and, and you're going to be able to, to find that balance. And yeah. The clutch and the, the gas. clutch. There you go. That's yeah. what I was looking for. Um, and it was, uh, it was a crazy experience, but it was, it was a good time. And I learned, yeah. you know what I mean? I learned how to drive and I love driving stick now. Yeah. And, and you don't, I mean, you learn quicker when, when you stall at a, <laughs> yeah, at a dude. green light, at a green light, green means go. <laughs> and there's this little bit of panic that happens too. When you stall, you're just like, fuck dude. Yeah. I can't believe this is happening. Yeah. It's, uh, it, it driving, driving sticks is fun. And that's, uh, that's how it, how I learned how to drive. And I, I drove at a pretty young age I, I didn't have a license or anything like that but my dad's Mexican, yeah. bro so he was just like hey let's let's teach you how to drive <laughs> yeah so. it's using those bad experiences and using them in, in a positive way right yeah, right taking of taking a, a little bit of fear and and using it as you know your fuel to to do whatever you do fear is is in my opinion one of the most beneficial i guess you could say fear is an emotion right yeah emotion oh yeah that um i think is necessary for any human being on planet earth to grow when you have fear of certain things not going correctly or not going in your favor or fear of the unknown when you push towards that fear and pass that fear that's when you really really start to see growth oh, yeah. as a human. You know what I mean? Again, in anything you're doing. I mean, it could just be just being a human. Yeah. You know what I mean? Last night I did uh some it's called Soy Funny at uh Beer Thug Brewing and I did a 5 minute stand up comedy set. <laughs> and there was what about like maybe 6 or 7 people in the crowd, right. but I was nervous as shit. Like I'm used to talking with the microphones like right. twice a week, maybe even three times a week. Right. Maybe this podcast is heard all around the world, all around the US, right. Southern California, Los Angeles. But still somehow, I don't know, and I asked you this, Amber, you remember? Like getting out of the car, I was like, Why am I so <laughs> I get nervous? Right. And even Amber gets nervous for me. Right. I get really and nervous. she doesn't even go <laughs> up there. I can only imagine Amber. Sometimes I just want to leave her in the car. <laughs> right. Because I stay she, in the car sometimes. Because, it's like that nervous energy, just like I, I have to have you stay in the car right now. Right, <laughs> right. Making me more nervous. <laughs> but I and I told her right when oh, so before I got up there, like uh I'm I I vibrate. It's so weird. Like I was explaining to her I'm not nervous. But like I, I get, I'm I'm nervous, right? right? I'm kind of scared just a little bit uh, that I'm not gonna I'm gonna forget the words. I'm gonna not say the right thing in right. order. But I always remember, like it's just it's playtime. Like I I, yeah. I gotta play with it, right? 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 The only way I'm gonna get good is to suck first, right? That's it. I, it's I gotta be bad first, right? Right? So and the the key is to. Be bad a little bit less each and every time. One percent better every time. Exactly. Beautiful. So I'm I vibrate. It's so weird. Like I'm vibrating <laughs> because I'm so nervous. I don't know right. if I'm shaky. I had too much caffeine. Right. At the c- cafe right. before, but I'm like vibrating before I go up, go up there. Right. So I go up there, do my five minute set. I come down. I sit down and I'm relaxed. Yeah. But I'm. On this weird high, even though there wasn't that many people in the room, it right. just felt amazing because I came, I saw out, and you I sought out what I was going to do, right. and I did it. Yeah, dude. And one, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm proud of you. Just throwing that out there. Cool, man thank to you. Man, dude, I'm proud of you. Because um, that's not easy. 
at no. all. Uh, I was shaking in my boots driving here to this fucking podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I had a I had a customer of mine, uh, a really really good friend. Um, he came and uh, dropped off some jars, right? And I was talking it, chopping it up before I left, and I was just like, "Man, I'm nervous." He was like, "Being nervous is okay. It means you love what you do, and it means you're alive." And I was like, "Oh man, that." that sat with me for a little bit. I was like, all right, you're, you're right. You know? And I, I, I know exactly what you were going through at that time before getting on stage, the nervousness, the shakiness and, and all that. Um, I'm, I've competed in jujitsu. Nothing. <laughs> there's nothing for me so far. There's nothing that has compared to competition. Um, as far as just like dealing with nerves, um, I fought MMA back in 2014 to just one MMA fight, got my fucking ass handed to me. So I was like, this is not my thing, but I've competed and dealing with those nerves and just like being able to settle, you know what I mean? In your mind, in your body, all that kind of stuff. And then going on the stage, implementing your game plan, doing what you need to do, no matter whether it went good or bad. And then getting off the stage and just being like, fuck, I did it. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's a lot to be said in that. And it takes a certain individual. Do you get nervous when you're in the moment of competing? Um, or, or, or it's, it's more so before. Yeah. yeah. And why? Why is that? I have no, I think it's, uh, honestly, I think there's a lot, ha, ha, adrenaline has yeah. a lot to do with that. Yeah. Because when you're, when you're competing or, or, you know, uh, doing a, a comedy show, um, performing on stage, a certain amount of adrenaline will like kick in mm-hmm. and that helps adrenaline will help keep nerves like kind of like calm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Okay. It's like when you see all these fighters and they're like beating the shit out of each other, you're just like, how in the fuck are you staying so calm right now? And you're in the middle of a firefight adrenaline, I think has a lot to do with that. You know what I mean? But I think that a lot of your your nervousness and your getting into your own head comes beforehand. Right. It, it's just like you're 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 constantly in your mind and I, I give my coach a big shout out because before he competes, he's a very active competitor. He's got a a, a kind of a, a sore back right now, so he hasn't been competing. But um every time that dude competes, puts on his headphones, sits in a corner and just just does doesn't talk. It just dead panned no no emotion whatsoever he just gets in this like this zone this zen mode right where he's just like everything's gonna be okay if i go out there and i lose i've lost before it's no problem right you know what i mean and uh it i I think that that's something that's gonna come with repetitive you know performance you know what i mean and he's done it so many times i think he's just kind of in this zone where he's just like i can Put my headphones on. I can listen to music and just be calm and yeah. just know that I've done this before. Right? Same exact thing with stand-up comedy. Yeah. You know, the more you, you do it, the more you, the you, easier it gets. Yeah. You understand yourself. You understand the nerves. Where'd you do your show at, by the way? In Bell. Okay. At nice. Beer Thug Brewing, there's this uh, show. Uh, is it Curtido TV? Curtido. The, Curtido, Curtido TV. Okay. Uh, along with uh, Jose Jose, is it Velasquez? Oh, I'm not sure about his last name. Okay. He he does these uh comedy pupusas and beers uh <laughs> events. That's a beautiful combination right there. In, in <laughs> California. <laughs> and it, it's in it's in partnership with him, Soy Funny. Okay. They do it every Wednesday and it's nice. an open mic comedy night at next the, time you do that, dude. Let me know. I'll come oh, yeah, I'll hell come yeah. I'll, I'll be there next Wednesday. Okay. So Come down. Anybody right. listening to this, come down. That's a date. Everybody. <laughs> Everybody come down. Watch my boy. Make him more nervous. <laughs> oh, shoot. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's more so feeling nervous before going up. But when I'm on that stage, I'm just like, okay, fuck it. I, right. I, this is my playground. There's an, And plus, there isn't that many people here. Well, fuck. Like, right. I, I can spend 10 minutes up here right. if I wanted to. Do your thing. Right. But... I think it's just the nervousness before going up. Right. But once I hit that stage and I start my bits, it's it's go time. That's amazing. Dude. And I get just have fun. Yeah. I dude. think one hundred percent of the, the time I'm just like, I just gotta have fun. Right. Like right. It's Let's, the biggest thing. Just have fun. I'm on stage. People are watching me. Right. Just got to try, try to make them laugh. Yeah, dude. That's it. That's awesome. I would love to see you do stand-up, bro. That'd be so awesome. That's and it. How long have you been doing stand-up for? Um, what would you say, Amber? Like, I've been thinking about doing comedy forever, for like 32 years. But <laughs> I've just, I think 
Uh, how, how? He's like in the beginning stages. Beginning of stages. It, right? Okay. Yeah, I think this writing material so I guess that's getting the be- out the there. The better question that I could ask is, how many shows have you done? Um, like three, th- three or four. I that's awesome, say. dude. I think that's the awesome. first time I got a laugh from a joke I I just com- wrote by myself <laughs> was <laughs> that was it. I was just like. I gotta do this. I, right. I I got I gotta do Keep this. Keep pursuing it, dude. I love yeah. it. That's super cool. Yeah, yeah, I I know that I if you put I and I'm a strong believer in right. and willpower and if you really want to dedicate yourself right. to doing something, right, somebody will do it. Like 100%. You, 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 you will do it if yeah. you have the passion and you're dedicated to that passion. Yep, it'll happen. A hundred percent. I agree in anything. Yeah. Anything you do, you know what I mean. I mean. You want a million dollars? Go get a million dollars. My uncle George says yeah. that time plus consistency plus time equals results. It's beautiful, and I believe that. It's I with uh, anything, anything that that is put in front of me. I just think about that quote. It's a great, it's a great quote. In fact, actually, in my Instagram, um, one of my recent Your posts, yeah, personal? my personal. Scroll down a little bit. Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. I know that it was on one of my posts recently. Um, maybe po- so, uh, go back up a little bit, Amber. Click on that that one right there. Let me see that Which one. Which one? Uh, the one of the left. You had your finger on right here. Yeah. No, that's not the one. Um. Well, anywho, on one of the posts, it says the same exact thing: consistency really? over time equals results. Right. And um, it's something that I I stand by. Now I'm not gonna be now. I'm, Trying to find it. Oh, that one's now I'm gonna I'm gonna push all of this. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. It's one of the jujitsu videos. I know for sure. And this is like one of my favorite videos of me and my kids. Um, yeah, you see all my beautiful baby girls. They're so awesome. This is the one that I was talking about with my kids asking me why I do jujitsu. It looks like, like it hurts. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, I, I just it's love like what I'm does. doing. Yeah, um, but I agree. Um, consistency over time creates results. Absolutely. It's it's, it's 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 simple yet it's so powerful. Right. Right with anything. And usually what that keeps me going when and and I'm working on the consistency part for right. like working out and creating a regimen for myself and right. eating correctly. And I think just build overall building the and it, again it's that balance, dude, because right. We got the podcast, we got the business, we got the yeah, of course. the new startup that we're doing. Right. Family time, spending, right. being a good boyfriend, right? Uh, being a, an apartment renter and and right. attending to your apartment and attending to your studio, having dirty laundry, bro, like anything. everything. <laughs> being being a good member of society, right. being a good cousin, being a good brother, right? Being a good friend, like it's all that balance, right? Right, and I think. It, it all ties into to your your uh your balance with your family life, and it's just I think that's where the difficult, at least for me, right? And I'll sense. I'll say from personal experience that that I'm very methodical, and I'm very I need to have lists, right? I, I'm I'm very operational, right? I need a list, I need a calendar, right? I mean, booking with us, right? That's that's how my brain works. Right. And links. It, it right. works in links and dates and calendars. Right. Of course. I feel that I, if you, if I can get my, my life like in that type of style and order, it'll be fine. But it's hard. Right. Very I mean, hard. Yeah. It, it is, uh, it is difficult to, to find, uh, that balance. You know what I mean? Especially when you got so much going on, um, but again, I think drinking that, water. I forgot about drinking water. You gotta oh, drink water. Yeah, you gotta drink water, dude. Yeah. Don't forget drinking water. Yeah. Number one priority. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just coming from the the fitness dude. Um, yeah. I mean, I, you know, balance. It's a huge thing that we all need to find in life. You know, and and I think that once you you find, uh, like you were talking about being methodical. Once you find that like methodical layout of being able to balance everything out, you know, things are going to kind of like shape out and just become easier. You know what I mean? But it's a lot, you know yeah. what I mean? Us humans and what we do is it's a lot, you know what I mean? Sh- showering. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? There we go. You're taking a shower. Don't forget to take a shower. Yeah. Um, there's just a lot to go into it. Life is, 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 um, life's tricky. I felt bad, dude, because I'm getting into this, uh, looking for some comedy coaches. Okay. 
And it, it ties back into being coachable. And I feel yeah. that if you have a mentor, uh, I believe it was Annabelle Rodriguez. I had him on the podcast uh, a few weeks ago, and I asked him like he 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 does a podcast streams to reality, and he talks a lot of talks to a lot of uh, entrepreneurs. Okay, and I asked him like, is there a common theme when you're talking to entrepreneurs? And he says, absolutely, one hundred percent, and that's mentors. Right. All these people have mentors. Right. And I was like, whoa, that, okay. All right. So I, I figured I, I'd use that and right, see if I can find a mentor. Right. A comedy mentor, a comedy coach. Someone who's been doing it. Exactly. You know I mean? Yeah. So I was on a phone call with this comedy coach, and I felt bad for the guy because it was just me telling him all the days that I can't do. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm I was busy like, those days. Yeah. Exactly. I told him I'm I, I can do Monday on and Tuesday because I do the podcast. Right. Wednesdays are gonna be tough because I work in Paramount and I have my studio here. And Thursday is the same as Wednesday, and Friday is gonna be a little bit iffy. Saturday and Sundays, I really don't want to do any coaching <laughs> stuff. So you're like, dude, uh, I need you to find the time. Right. And <laughs> that and he told me, he was like, Okay, well, uh, what like what is a good time? Can you just not t- can you tell me like what's a good time for you? Right. And I just thought back and I was like, come on, bro. Like I was thinking, if you really want to do this, you'll do this of and you'll you make will. the yeah, time. You'll make the time. Yeah. And, and I made I made good. that quick, you know, and kick so, in my ass. And so he's been to mentoring. myself. How long has he been mentoring you now? Not yet. Okay. It hasn't happened yet. Okay, but it's <laughs> he gonna hasn't happen. Found time. He, hasn't, <laughs> he hasn't found the time just yet. I'm looking we for that. The day. We haven't found the day. <laughs> We're still working on that. Okay, that's good though. <laughs> We're negotiating. It's a that. good step forward. But he made time for the phone call. That's awesome. See, There's we're taking steps. steps. Methodical steps. Right? Methodical but steps. Methodical steps. It's gonna happen, dude. It's gonna happen. That's I awesome. think we're looking at Mondays. I don't know. We, I got to talk to Amber first because she she's the boss. She's the boss. She's got the calendar. She knows what's up. She's checking her calendar right now. She's like, I think Monday will. Do Honestly, it. she keeps me in check. That's she. Good, she dude. she's the she's a person that keeps me in check and that that laundry in check and that right. shower and check. The shower check. Yo, yeah. babe, you smell. Yeah. Get the hell in the shower. I'm yeah. like, That's okay, good. we're down to our last underwear. I think it's time for <laughs> it's you to, time do, laundry. to do some laundry. That's amazing. Right. But That's it's awesome. that balance. Do you need you need that and. I'm a person that does 110% on whatever I need to do and what I want to do. Right. And I need somebody like Amber to ground me and say, bro, take it easy. Right. Sit back. Right. Drink some water. Right. And live in the moment. Have some family time. We all need Mm -hmm. need those people. We all need Ambers in our life. Can I find an Amber? Please find me an Amber. (laughs) You can rent me out. Okay. That's That's awesome. I'll yell at you and tell you no. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh, that's so good. It's like an Alexa, but she's a she's a Latina Alexa. Yeah, could you imagine just having Amber's voice in a little like box, and you just have it on like your at your table anywhere it's you time go? To visit your family. <laughs> yes. That's awesome. We got to work on a product, Amber. Yeah, we're yeah. gonna come out with something, Amber. All right, my voice is here. It's ready. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> but yeah, dude, that, that's it. It's just balance on 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 stuff like that. It's that's hard. good. Well, yeah, I know, but. We're, it sounds like we're working towards a, a goal of of getting that mentor and 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 moving forward in the right direction without you know without my dad and without my coach, I'd probably be pretty lost all over the place as well. You know, what you'd I mean? have a really good talk with Annabel. Honestly, I, I gotta I'll, I'll hook you guys. I'll start I'm, a thread or something because I think you guys would have a great conversation. I would love I I I love doing stuff like this. You know what yeah. I mean? I. If you guys can't tell, I love talking. Um, I love talking about my story. I love hearing people's stories. It's just like one of those things that just I I have such a passion for. And um, you need your own podcast. Yeah, you should start That's a podcast. I'm, <laughs> I'm telling you right now, I, I really think that I would do good. You know what I, I mean? Think you and, would. Yeah. Um, people, it's weird because like people will like. They'll tell me like when I'm like at a grocery store or something, they're like your voice sounds super familiar. And I'm like, that's weird. But <laughs> I, 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 I don't know where that's going to be from. But um, I just I, I enjoy talking. I enjoy being in this type of setting to where I'm, you know, one on one with somebody. I've got a pretty, you know, significant amount of people that um, that I could talk to and interview with and, and just kind of, you know, break down exactly what you're doing with me and. Just continue a conversation. What podcasting is all about is just it's just conversations. You yeah. know what I mean? And it's just a long conversation. And 
I can have conversations for hours. You know what I mean? And um, I, I would love to, like I said, once we're done here, I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about, you know, some pursuits with you guys and how I can, you know, get a podcast started and go in yeah. and because I know nothing about it. I just know how to talk. Um, but yeah, dude, I mean, when it comes down to it, I think that you're, you're doing an incredible job. You've got a lot on your plate, you know, um, being a boyfriend, um, <laughs> being a podcaster, um, running your business. Uh, it's, it's a lot to juggle, you know what I mean? But, um, from one man to another, I'm proud of you because Thanks, you man. continue to keep pushing, you know Appreciate what I mean? It. One of my, uh, biggest, uh, the three words that I stand by and I, I say in, if you go to my page on every single freaking post I make, the last three words I always say are let's keep pushing. It is um, three words that I love. Uh, mm. Yeah, it's it's everywhere. It's just, in fact, I'm actually dropping a, a design uh, pretty soon here. Um, this video is so uh, like I love this video because it was like done like professionally. And I'm not gonna lie, dude, it makes your boy look like a badass. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's pretty cool. It does, dude. Um, look at that. Yeah, and this, this like sweep right here, super dope. Nice little scissor sweep. Whoa! Boom. Like the timing was super cool, but so you so you also design like you you do designs. And yeah, stuff like so I merch? do I do design. So if you actually go to uh, the Knockout Bakery, um, my page for that. If you I don't know if you're able to. Uh, so actually, if you click on designs, oh, okay, right, right up there. Me... Yeah, I don't know if it'll. So these are some of the designs that I've done. Um, oh, I, I think cool. I'm on my sixth or seventh design. Um, and this is this is something that I love to do. I love creating stuff. So the thing is, is I am horrendous at drawing, but Gregorio's really good at being creative. He's got a lot of like these these images in his head that he just basically wants put out and drawn. So I I um, hired a, a designer, um, Chase Curtis Concepts. Big shouts to you, bro. You are fucking amazing. Um, he, I'll call him randomly in the middle of the <laughs> night and I'll be like, yo dude, I've got something super violent in my head and I need you to draw it out for me. And he does it. And then I basically take it, I get all the rights to it and then I print it. I print it on t-shirts and I print nice. it on rash guards. Uh, so this is the design that I did for my co well, actually this is my first design I ever did. Um, this was back in like right when I started uh, the Knockout Bakery. And uh, Amber, are you able to pull up my my story, like my stories recently that I just posted by any chance? Um, yeah. Yes. Okay, so that's my new design. That's the one Ooh. I just dropped. Like, look at this. So this is for another very, very good friend of mine. His name is uh, Ian Chongo Funk. Uh, Chongo, I love you with my whole heart, bro. Uh, thank you for everything you do for me. Um this is basically a bunch of monkeys breaking into a kitchen and they are destroying the cooks and bakers. Um, yeah, like their like fa ripping, he ripped, he ripped, off, ripped, off, yeah, ripped off his face. He's like pulling off the head. Uh, that's my coach right there, but my coach <laughs> and his girlfriend. Um, <laughs> so yeah, uh, that's uh, the summer pasta salad that oh, you guys are going to try. Oh, yeah, yeah, so that's what you're going to try. Um, but yeah, my merchandise and I'm just always constantly promoting my athletes and stuff like that, but um, my merchandise does very, very well. I do t-shirts, I do hoodies, um, and I do rash guards and rash guards are basically the shirts, uh, compression shirts that the jujitsu athletes wear. Um, and those have done very well. Again, when I first started at Gil, I, I just wanted to do it because I had a passion for like making shit. You know what I mean? Um, Made my first one. People were like, yo, dude, this is fucking badass. Keep going. And I was like, okay, I'll keep going. And then I did another design. And then I did another. And then I did another. And I was like, man, this is fucking They super, look great. Super rad. Um, and when my uh, my neck design prints that monkey design, I'm going to get you and Amber uh, a t-shirt for you guys to rock. Nice. All right. Um to knock each other off. <laughs> yeah, you, guys, you guys can kick each other's I'm ass like, with that shirt on. We have the shirt on. All now. you gotta We're do is you gotta <laughs> you gotta record it. And you gotta tag me in it. Okay. You got it. <laughs> um, 
So yeah, um, you know, another another thing that I, I love about what I do, and if you actually look at that first, um, that one right there, this mm-hmm. video has done very, very well. So a very, very good friend of mine, um, Pablo Martinez. Um, he, uh, at an earlier age in his life, developed uh, early onset Parkinson's. Oh, wow. And he uses um, jujitsu as a way to combat that disease, right? And what I like to do with my platform and what I have always said from the beginning is I am going to do everything in my power to help as many people out as I can. This is not about me. It's not about Gregorio. This 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 movement, this knockout bakery is about everyone else that's like involved. You know what I mean? So with Pablo, usually what I'll have done is I'll have like my media guy come in and I'll have him interview these athletes, whether they're wearing my rash guards, if they're wearing my rash guards, it's a lot better just because, you know, they, they're rocking and repping uh, knockout bakery, but they, he has conversations with these people in regards to the things that I've done for them, um, what the knockout make bakery means to them. Um, and that, that is another one of my favorite things about my page. Cause I, I do it. I've, I've started doing it, um, for the past like month, month and a half. And the cool thing that I love about it is it, it takes the focus off of me because I, I again I I don't I don't need the, all the focus on me. I want to be able to highlight other beautiful people in this world and like what they're doing and what their fight is. You know what I mean? And I think that I've done that pretty well. And this was one of my favorite videos that I did just because of what he is going through and and and. Um, you know, what he has overcome through jujitsu has been amazing. This video did super, super well. He got a lot of uh, love from everybody uh, on this video. Um, but it, it's definitely something that I, I like to incorporate as well. Um, just being able to highlight beautiful people in the world. You know what I mean? And uh, like I said before, um, with the Knockout Bakery, it was always my goal and always my intention to help out as many people on planet earth that I could. And, um, I'm going to continue to keep doing so, you know what I mean? Until, um, until the end, you know what I mean? Um, my, my, my goal and intention is to, to take knockout bakery into every state. I want to have a location in every state, every city. I want to be like, Oh, it would, it would hard. It would be hard not to say a franchise because at that point, that's kind of what a franchise would be right. Every state, every city, all that kind of stuff. But I want multiple locations. I want p- people to be able to stand by the knockout bakery. Not only will this help, you know, me out, but this is going to help other people out. Maybe people that are looking for jobs. You know what I mean? How can I help you? You know, do you want to come work for the knockout bakery? Do you want to learn something, you know? And, um, it's something that I'm just going to continue to keep going. Like, it's just, it's always been a tremendous passion of mine to help people and help others. And, um, I I just, I love doing it, you know? So it's something I'm going to forever do. When you start to think of we instead of I and more community than me, right? it it begins to work. Yeah. Because you're including all these other people that have the same aspirations, the same dedication that you are. Right. So I think it'll happen. And if there's anything that Mind Buzz Media or the Mind Buzz podcast can help with that. Right. Then uh, you guys are we're here. Yeah, I know you are. You guys are way too good. Um, the fact that you even reached out to me and was like, "Yo, dude, I, I'm just a fan of your page." Like, you have, I can't tell you how much that shit means to me, dude. Uh, you know, I, I that just means that I'm doing something right. Yeah, you know what I mean. You wouldn't be here chatting with me if this wasn't something you were interested in. You know what I mean. And and it means a lot. It means a lot to me, dude. Um, I tell people this all the time. I never got into the knockout bakery for money. I, I didn't do this for money because I, quite frankly, I can go get a job anywhere. I think that I would be good at anything that I did. You know what I mean? And I still do stuff on the side just to kind of keep money coming in and stuff. But I just want to be able to show people what passion for something and a good heart will do for you. You know what I mean? And in and, and the places it'll take you. And, um, I'm going to continue to keep pushing, um, until the very, very end of me, at least just being on planet earth. You know what I mean? And, um, along the way I'm, I'm going to help as many people as I can. And 
again, even with you two, if there's something that I can do, please fucking let me know. You know what I mean? If you're just like, yo, we need uh, more of these. We need, <laughs> <laughs> hey, we need more knockout jars. Dude, I, you literally don't have to say anything but that. I need more knockout jars. I'm not even going to say, hey, okay, this is how much it is. I hey, will, good morning. I will, Sorry for the late text. <laughs> nothing like that. It's going to be. I'll literally grab a bag. <laughs> I'll drive my ass over here and deliver <laughs> you guys knockout jars. It's just something I love to do. You know what I mean? So, um, moving forward, uh, I know that we're going to stay in close contact. Yeah, let's and, do it. And um, I, I, I'm super humbled and super honored that you had me on this podcast to talk and talk about my story and my passions. And it was amazing to be able to hear your guys' story as well. I fucking love coffee, so I'm going to stop there sometime soon and grab some coffee from you guys. But uh, this has just been amazing. It's been super dope. Um, and I, I just can't thank you guys enough. Appreciate that, brother. And Gregorio, thanks for coming on the Mind Buzz podcast. Thank you, bro. Uh, where can we find you? Um, so the I, I guess the, the number thanks, one, man. of course, man, thank yeah. you. Uh, the number one way to get a hold of me right now is going to be through uh, my, my social media page, which is Instagram. I do have an email. I do have a telephone number. Um, I am building a website at the moment, so that is going to be available as well and uh, a link in my bio um, very shortly here. But if you're looking about uh, getting anything from me, just DM me and um, I promise I'll make a relationship with you and uh, give you uh, the best food and best products on planet Earth. So Yeah. There we go. Beautiful. And they're really cool, good. They're amazing. Not just listen, because he's in listen, front of us. <laughs> listen to them and what they say. <laughs> <laughs> approved true. by Amber. Beautiful. From the Mind I'm Buzz. A hard critic. She I'm is. Hard honestly, is. she is. Hey, knockout bakery, baby, all day. Ooh. Let's go. There we go. go. <laughs> I appreciate that, of course, buddy. Bro. So, Thank you. All the links to Gregorio and the Knockout Bakery will be down in the show description. If you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Please do. And please follow Gregorio and the Knockout Bakery. Check out all his fine products they You're were amazing, delicious bro. they're 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 just amazing you gotta check them out for yourself Beautiful. don't take my word for it send them a dm pick up as many as you can because i don't know just just do it <laughs> just, just fucking do it just do it you're it, awesome they're man. amazing thank you so much man and again thank you too for for having me on here you guys yeah. are beautiful people as well and um let's keep pushing Thanks, man. And Amber, do we have anything coming up for this week? We got Que Me Cuentas. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Eee. Check it out. Or chat to the up. Paramount. Sheesh. That's right. So right after this, I'm going to write my story. Because I've been thinking about <laughs> it. Don't be about it. You haven't done it. Uh, this is where Amber comes in. we got to push our little button. Amber, what do we need right now? <laughs> <laughs> I already have it written out. Oh, in my there head. We go. <laughs> That's it. We've been talking about it for weeks. So awesome. we're, we just got to put it on paper. There you That's go. it. Good. That's all we got to do. <laughs> what else do we have coming up, Amber? Uh, the the mind, mind Buzz. <laughs> <laughs> Not much. Catch us on the next one. See you guys. Thanks for you. Thank you, man. Appreciate, appreciate you. Thanks for listening to the Mind Buzz podcast. Subscribe to the Mind Buzz YouTube channel and watch full podcast episodes. Keep up with the hosts, guests, and upcoming events by following the Mind Buzz on Instagram at the mind buzz. See you on the next one.